Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Rob Balasabas. I'm the social media and community manager here at Thinkific, and I want to welcome you to another uh, Thinkific Live. We have a course creator spotlight happening today, and we are going to be uh, talking with Dave Chesson. So um, I see that we have some bit of feedback here on the echo, but um, yeah, we're going to be talking with Dave Chesson, who is the founder of Kindlepreneur and also the founder of Publisher Rocket. So I'm gonna bring him on the screen here and we're gonna be talking to him about really how he's using free online courses to drive sales and also get some tips for selling eBooks online. So we're gonna bring him on here in two seconds. Hey Dave, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Good, good, thanks for joining us. Um, before we get started and really start digging into some of the tips that you're able to share with our community, wanted to maybe get you to do a quick introduction of who you are, what you do, and uh, where you're at today. Sure. Well, I'm Dave Chesson. I currently live in Nashville, Tennessee. I used to be in the military, deployed all over the world, and it was during that time that I realized that I could start creating sort of an exit strategy uh, and start building my own business, in which case I really got behind self-publishing books on Amazon. And when that really started to take off, I realized that my understanding of Amazon and why it chooses to show one book over another seemed to be a real competitive advantage that nobody was talking about. So I combined all of my book marketing experience and knowledge into my website, kindlepreneur.com, uh, where each article I share a particular strategy for users to be able to turn around, take, use, and see results in their books. And from there, I kept seeing that there's a real need for software to really help people with that. So I created Publisher Rocket. Uh, you can find it at publisherrocket.com that gives authors an insight as to what's going on in the market and help them choose their keywords as well as categories and uh, also help them with their Amazon advertisement. And luckily, uh, through all of my, my books and the book sales, I was able to get out of the military, move to Nashville and be here full time with my family, which is absolutely incredible. No, that's incredible. That's really awesome. Um, yeah, if anybody, you know, I'll share the link to your website. So I'll share the link to Publisher Rock and also Kindlepreneur. You've got an amazing story. You spent some time in the Navy. Yep. And I was reading that in the evenings and weekends, you were setting up online businesses, you were generating affiliate revenue. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that, um, you know, that that season in life. And then we'll get into, um, you know, publish, you know, self publishing and everything that you're doing now. Yeah, so I started off on submarines. I was a nuclear engineer and um, wasn't exactly my favorite job. We'll put it that way. And if I've got any of my uh, comrades watching, you know, they'll, they'll get a chuckle out of that because they know it's so true. I then switched over to doing military diplomacy and I was really excited about that. But the problem was the first assignment that I got, I was sent to Korea, but I had to do two years without my family. And my wife and I had this kind of coming to moment where we were, she looked at me and she said, Hey, you know, what's all this for? And what are you what are you doing all this for? And I really thought about it and I didn't have an answer. I wasn't trying to be an admiral. I didn't have some personal mission that I wanted to fulfill. I was just going through everyday life, you know, doing this hardcore job eight to five, traveling without my family, and just realizing that it really wasn't my definition of success. So we started to look at what would be success. And for success for us was being able to make a steady income that allows me to be home and to work from home. That way I wasn't traveling from one point to another. So when I started to look at that, I started to ask myself, okay, what can I do with my background? I was a Chinese specialist. I had you know an engineering background and I kept finding that any other jobs I would take outside of the Navy were gonna be ones that would probably be using my background a lot and sending me off to faraway countries. So we realized I'd be jumping from one traveling nine to five job to another traveling nine to five job. And so that wasn't it. So we then started looking at what, what could we create? And the problem was, was that I was in Korea at the time. So I couldn't do anything. I couldn't build a business that required me to be around, to answer emails, support tickets or any of that sort. I needed something that would allow me to work on it when I could and not require me to constantly be there. Uh, while I was in Korea, I was actually sent out on Korean warships all the time. So there were, you know, there'd be a good couple of weeks or a month where I just couldn't answer anything. So when we started to dig in, I realized that I could start making niche websites. And uh, my focus was doing SEO, which is search engine optimization, where you write content where Google chooses to show your content to their searchers instead of others. And when I started doing this, it was great because I'm not, I'll tell you, 
when I first started, I was definitely not a great writer. And the truth is, is that you don't really have to be so long as you can be clear and concise on explaining something. So my website started to really do well. They were gaining a lot of traffic. However, though, I had this crazy problem where I, although I was bringing in a lot of people and I was helping a lot of people, it really wasn't making that much money. Uh, I was making maybe a couple hundred dollars a month in Amazon or excuse me, in Google ads. And that was about it. So I started looking at opportunities on how I could make my own product. And that's when I discovered self-publishing on Amazon. And with Amazon, you know, I saw that there's a huge market of people going there looking for books. And I thought maybe if I were to compile some of my websites into one book, perhaps that would do well. Well, what I found out was, is that they did really well because there were people on Amazon actually searching for my books or the subject matter that I was covering. And there were people on Google who were searching and honestly for like three bucks or six bucks or however I priced the book, it was worth it for people to just have a book with all the information right there for them instead of having to click around on the internet. So it was really cool because then I turned my website to basically promoting the books and I was making sales from my websites. I was making sales from Amazon and it just really helped to boost it. So I took that and did it again and again. But I started to ask myself, why does Amazon choose my book over this one? Or why is it that even though I'm selling more, this book shows up when searchers search for this? And so I used my Google SEO background to start to really analyze Amazon SEO. And, and all of a sudden, I found some incredible insight as to what was going on, why Amazon does what they do. And when I used those tactics, it became even more so of a success. So I then decided to create kindlepreneur.com to focus on teaching how to do those things. Uh, at that time, I was actually deployed to Sri Lanka, of all places, and I just kind of continued to build it, but that was going to be my last deployment. And once I was done with Sri Lanka, my books were making more money than I was in, in the Navy, and I was able to get out and do this full time. Awesome. That's really good. Um, you know, your backstory with really doing this on the weekend and then really trying to find your purpose and like, what are you doing all this for um, is is really, really, you know, intriguing, right? Like, I think there's a lot of course creators out there that are doing a certain job and, and they're kind of trying to look for their purpose. And so, you know, online courses and building something else um, that really has meaning for you um, is really cool to hear. So um, you touched on Kindlepreneur. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, the you know, you've got this, uh, one of the videos I think that you have on your YouTube channel, which I'll show here in a second, is that you are using online courses kind of in a unique way where your courses are actually free. And then you monetize that uh, through the back end with, um, you know, one of your other products, right? So maybe tell, tell us about how you're doing that, how you're using uh, your free course, um, who that that's really geared for, and, um, you know, how you're using that as part of your funnel uh, to sell on the back end. Sure. Well, when I was in Sri Lanka, I created a software called Publisher Rocket. It was actually called KDP Rocket back in the day. I'm still wearing one of the old school shirts, uh, just just OG style. Um, <laughs> but the uh, the software was developed to help with keywords and categories and to understand the competition, see what they're doing. But then we came up with this new feature called Amazon Ads, and we call it the AMS keyword feature. And we started seeing that the best way to do Amazon ads was to be able to kind of mass produce legitimate and good keywords, because honestly, you're needing thousands of keywords to target in Amazon ads. It's not like Facebook ads where they'll like quickly, you know, drain your $10 a day. Amazon ads, you have to really work to drain your, your $10 limit. So we developed this, this, this feature. And then the question we had next was, well, okay, how do we educate people to do it correctly? So I sat down and I started writing an article on Kindlepreneur on like how to do Amazon ads the right way. And about 10,000 plus words later, I realized, you know, this is already getting to a book size level and I'm not even halfway there, as well as the fact that in order to really do this right, I need video to show them. So I scrapped the entire article because I figured it was not going to be beneficial. And I started building out this course. And the thing was, was that there was two things. Number one was that we had, there were a lot of people who were selling kind of similar course and they were selling them for like $300, $400. Or even one was at $600. And I was like, all right, you know, we could kind of generate this. And yeah, I'm sure we would have made a lot of sales from it. 
But here's the thing though, we had our software, which had a feature that really helped out, okay? And I decided that, why don't we just make the course entirely free? You see, people were really hunting for the information to learn how to do Amazon ads. And I'm kind of one of those proponents of like, you know, authors have a lot of costs. When they make books, they have to pay for really expensive book covers, editors, formatters, you know, all these other marketing tactics. Like, you know, here's an idea. What about making this an absolutely free course and we'll show them how to do it manually, okay? You don't have to have our software in order to actually go through and do it. But then we're gonna show how the software saves them time and a lot of time. Uh, as a matter of fact, I did one particular thing and I've kind of fast forwarded through it and it ultimately it took me like an hour and 11 minutes. But then I used the software and within 30 seconds I had the same results. So people could clearly see the difference. Then we finished off the course and what I found was is this. First off, people love the fact that we made it free instead of $300 or $400 that they were expecting. Two, when they got in, they started taking the course. They realized this was not a gimmick. Like I didn't hold back on anything. The quality was top notch and it could have been a $300 course. On top of that, yeah, they get it that I said, hey, our software. So it's understandable that, you know, if you buy the software, great. If you don't, no, no problem. But the key was I taught them how to do it without the software. I think we would have gotten slammed if I would have been like, okay, well, the only way to do this is use my software and we're not going to talk about any other way to do it. So this really built up a lot of trust. We really educated people. I think that the people who ended up buying our software got even more value out of it because they knew how to do it correctly. Um, I think that from that word of mouth spread, we had thousands of people sign up for this free course, which of course goes to our email list and word of mouth spread. People loved sharing, hey, don't pay $400 for a course, just take this free one. It's the best intro into Amazon ads. Um, so yeah, ultimately, we made a lot more sales. Our branding was way higher. Uh, our email subscriber rate was through the roof and mm -hmm. people just absolutely loved it. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I love that you really went even one step further um, when you wanted to reach your target audience. You didn't just reach them when they found your, you know, your, your product. You went and you offered a free, like a free resource. So you gave first. Um, and then took that one step further and not even talking about your platform yet. You just wanted to solve their issue, you know, help them where they're at. And then your, your, your software became sort of the solution to, to make life easier for them. Um, exactly. that's awesome. That's awesome. It's a great way to use online courses. You know, a lot of people really think of online courses as like, I'm going to build this thing and right from the gate, I'm going to sell it. You took it even one step further and just like, I'm going to give it away for free to build my list and then you know, have that offer at the end. So uh, that being said, I think it's really important to then talk about how you're doing that. So walk us through once someone finds your course and we'll talk about how people are finding your courses through different channels, your, cha your YouTube channel and all that. Um, but let's just say once people have found your free course, what does that sort of funnel look like from there, from that point, the free course to the paid, the paid offer? Sure. Well, let me step back and give one tactic that really helps out as well. Um, when I created the course, I created the landing page on Thinkific, so it's all right there. However, though, I also went and bought a domain name uh, for amscourse.com, which 301 redirects right to the Thinkific page where you can see the landing page. What's really cool about this is that, well, if you're on a podcast interview or you're doing your own podcast, quickly just saying amscourse.com, people can actually remember that and it's not a big thing to type in or anything. So I'd highly recommend starting with that. Now, when somebody signs up for the course, they have to put in their email so that they get access. And what we do is we actually have a five day email course where we're kind of helping them along. There's actually five sections to the course, but we're helping to remind them that each day, you know, be sure to check out the course. The funny thing is, you know, I would say, I don't remember the percentage off the top of my head, but we have a lot of people who sign up for the course and they end up don't taking it they're still there. So we found that when we added an, an autoresponder that reminded them of each day, uh, that more people took it and more people got more value out of it. Now, the truth is we really don't make a major push to buy the software. We don't have sales pitches or anything that really follow. And each email is really talking about what they can do that day to see what happens. Um, and we do this because I really don't want to break their trust by saying, you know, like flat out, like, hey, this entire thing was just to make a sale. 
I think that the course was laid out well enough that people just inherently uh, see the value of the software and, and purchase it. And if they don't, well, you know, no problem. Then at least they remember that we really delivered on some great value. I would say in the future, maybe we could think about doing some sales pitches. But the truth is, is that, um, you know, we've delivered. People got to interact with me, as you can see from the video there. And uh, they walk away just usually blown away that that was free. And that just carries on, not just for maybe our software, but if we ever come out with another product or if we come out with another course, they'll know the level of quality we'll deliver. Awesome. I love that. I love that. That's really good. Um, and, and I like that you're saying that you're not actually even making a really heavy push for um, you know, selling your software, you know, you're just giving. And then at the end, people just feel like, hey, you know, I want to invest back in this. You know, if his free stuff is this good, then, you know, what is this tool that he's talking about? Um, so you're really earning your trust, uh, their trust there. Um, can you spend a couple minutes just kind of going through? Because a lot of people, a lot of the most, one of the most qu common questions we get here at Thinkific is, you know, building these landing pages, right? These sales pages. And you've really built a really clean, easy to follow, really concise. There doesn't seem to be anything extra that's not necessary, right? Everything has a purpose on your mm -hmm. landing page. Um, would you mind you know, spending a minute or two? I'm just gonna kind of scroll through here, but you know, what is sort of, what is the sort of the, where's your, your thoughts with building this landing page and why are, you know, why is this video at the top? And you know, why is everything in this particular order? Yeah, well, we put the video at the top because we wanted people to make sure that it wasn't, um, you know, one of those, shall we say, low quality courses. There are a lot of people that will like, you know, either like hide themselves and it's just, it sounds like they're rambling while they're just screen recording. Um, we wanted to show that we actually took the time to edit it and show. Um, so in essence, it's like, here's a quick clip of what you get. And it really is a video course. So we wanted that to be uh, front and center. We also wanted to make sure too that that tag at the top that says uh, sell more books with Amazon book ads. Um, we found that that was probably the best converting. We did look at like changing the title and seeing what happened. Um, but otherwise, the truth is, is that I'm not I'm not the greatest web designer. I'm not, uh, uh, I don't have somebody on my team that's a web designer. And we were basically able to use Thinkific template. We did a little bit of CSS changes here and there just kind of change the uh, font to look more like my website as well. I changed a couple of colors here and there. But otherwise, I mean, that was it. It's, I think what you see right there took, I don't know, less than an hour to really put together. Um, and like you said, you know, it's it's clean, it's to the point. And, you know, there's, there's actually, we see 292 five-star reviews. And um, I think there's a lot more because I haven't approved a lot, but, I mean, that was, I think that's the biggest thing. I think when people see how many people have actually enjoyed the course, I think that carries a long way. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's simple. It's clean. It was easy and you don't have to be a giant web developer to create that. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I love that you're using just like basically out of the box, um, Thinkific landing page, um, really straightforward. So yeah, no, that's great. If anybody has any questions, by the way, as we go through, we're gonna do a bit of Q&A at the end, uh, probably in about 10 minutes. Uh, I've got a couple more questions for Dave and really picking his brain. But um, if you have any questions about what he's doing, how he's built his courses and how that funnel works for him, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll watch out for your questions. Um, okay, awesome. So now let's take it a, a step back and um, you know, explain to us uh, and share some of the tactics that you're using to get your audience into the free course, um, sort of like one step you know, back. Yeah, well, there, there's a couple of things that really come with it. You know, the free course itself is honestly a super content upgrade. I mean, incredible, right? Uh, most people will do like a quick checklist PDF. Some people will say, download my free, you know, book, which is usually like a 20 page PDF, um, just a bit longer. But when you say a full free video course and they can actually see a sample of the video, that's huge. So one of the things we did for marketing wise was is that on Kindlepreneur's own articles, we constantly kind of talk about Amazon ads legitimately. Amazon came out with a new change. Let's talk about that. Hey, what are the difference between broad, exact, you know, and, and negative? And, you know, and so we write articles and then it's like a big box that says, hey, you know, if, if you're not sure you know much about Amazon ads, click here to take this complete free course. So we did a couple of those things. We also have it in our sidebar as well that people can sign up for the course. Um, but here's the other thing too, though, when we guest post on other people's websites, talking about, 
um, Amazon ads, it's very easy to write an, a great article about Amazon ads and then say, click here to sign up for the full free course. Most mm -hmm. uh, people who run a website really won't have a problem with that because it's not like they have some all encompassing article on that. And let's face it, if the person came to that article because they want to learn a bit more about Amazon ads or why it helps you sell more books, isn't the natural thing to want uh, to offer something like that free Amazon ads course? So we were able to not only increase the conversion rates on our own articles on Kindlepreneur, we were also able to increase the subscriber rates every time we go to guest post somewhere. And again, I, I think our biggest thing was word of mouth. Once you have one person who signs up and is kind of blown away with the level of content that we give for free, their natural reaction is to turn around and go to author Facebook groups and post about it, um, letting people know if it's good or not. <laughs> uh, the other thing is too, is I keep getting people who, when somebody asks a question on an author group, you know, like, Oh, something about Amazon ads, nine times out of 10, some, somebody out there will post, you should take this free course. So it's just had this natural effect on our own content, our guest posting and just social media presence without even lifting a finger. Uh, that's awesome. That's really good. Yeah. So basically creating what you're saying, there's creating really good quality content, you know, inside the course, naturally people will just want to share it, right? Like exactly. Just, just want to share it. So quality, that's the, the best way to get your, you know, uh, create that sort of shareable effect with your content. Um, that's fantastic. Can you share some, uh, some of the results? I mean, it doesn't have to be exact numbers, but how well has, you know, you know, this worked for you to drive leads, because you also have a YouTube channel. Um, I don't know if you want to share a few words about that, how you're creating, because that's, I think we were talking before we went, um, you know, uh, went live, but you've only been really pouring into YouTube for what, about a year and a half? Not yeah, even two years? not even with, with a lot of focus either. Um, mm -hmm. But here's the thing, it was, when I was creating the course, I actually used Scrivener to like write out the course script and kind of plan out everything. When mm -hmm. I was writing out the course script, I started to think to myself, you know, some of these lessons would make for a great YouTube video. So what we did was, was that when I filmed that lesson for my course, I then also took and I added like a little section here and there that was like the YouTube version of it. So I had like a YouTube intro and I had a YouTube outro. And then I talk about making sure to sign up for the free course that they'd like to learn more. So I literally just added a little bit extra to those YouTube videos and then posted them on my YouTube channel, which naturally brought a lot of people. I mean, if you're on YouTube and you're searching for how to, you know, ha how to choose keywords for your Amazon ads or how to set up your Amazon ads or any of those things, you'll probably find one of the lessons from my course, which is a natural lead into getting the full details of everything. So we really didn't have to do too much extra. Now with the rest of my, my YouTube channel, the truth is, is that the way I look at it is my number one priority is Kindlepreneur. Um, and when I'm writing an article, sometimes I ask myself, you know, if, would this article be better if I had a video showing what I'm talking about, or perhaps maybe instead of wasting all this time in the article talking about how to set up your Goodreads account, perhaps I should just do a video on it. So that's what gives me the idea to create the videos I do and we'll create them just kind of help out with the content. So in essence, I broke apart pieces of my free course on Thinkific and used it to kind of attract and lead people without extra effort. And on top of that, too, with YouTube, I'm usually just using it to find ways to improve the articles that I'm writing. Yeah, that's great. So uh, really, I've heard this also before with a lot of successful YouTubers that have online courses is that they have taken little pieces, little, like one of the lessons, for example, inside their course, and then share that on YouTube. And um, Dave, maybe you can speak on this, but a lot of the a lot of the people that are new to that strategy are kind of worried that they're giving away their courses for free, right? Their content is away for free. Um, you know, the the answer is that you know obviously the course is more of the A to Z um, order of how you know that content should be learned. Um, what's your thoughts on that? With sharing you know different lessons from your course in a public space like YouTube. Yeah, I think um, I think that really depends on on you mm -hmm. and what you're comfortable with doing. The truth of the matter was, was that 
for me, I knew that there was a major pain point for what I was presenting. And mm -hmm. in order to really solve the overall pain, you need to see the huge picture, the big picture. There wasn't one lesson that ruins everything. Okay. Uh, if I gave away this one lesson, there's no need to watch the rest of the course. There was none of that. Now, maybe in your course, there might be that situation. If there is, you might want to rethink about the content that you're generating. Um, but however, though, I think that being able to fully deliver um, you know, it is a big part of it. Remember when I said I was creating those niche websites, okay? And it was an entire website full of information and I compiled it into a book, right? And I thought, you know what, why would anybody buy this book if they could find all the same information online? Well, the reason why people bought that book was because they just want to be able to have one thing to be able to go through systematically and know how to do it. I remember mm -hmm. back in the day, there was, um, I was trying to learn how to do, what was that uh, Google thing? It was a, a Google Tag Manager, right? I mean, it was it was kind of a new thing and I couldn't find anything out there. At the time, I found this guy who was doing YouTube videos on how to set up your Google Tag Manager. And I wasted, I don't know, four or five hours going through video after video, trying to get it. Nothing was done. Um, and... I would have paid an arm and a leg just to have had him compile it all in a course, even though all the stuff was there, give it step by step instead of making me hunt for it. So kind of to wrap up on that, I think that first off, there's a major value to have all your information presented, presented in a sequential order that is organized for such a thing than it is just the information itself. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what people are saying. You know, successful course creators, you know, it's not this one lesson that's going to break everything and your business is going to fall apart because somebody gets access to it. If anything, it actually attracts people to you because you're giving them value without asking for anything at all. And right. they want to see the rest, right? So, um, and also that sequential order is um, has a lot of value as well. So, awesome. Okay, so we're going to, uh, let's shift over a little bit to... Um, you know, selling more eBooks and publishing and, and self-publishing. Can you share a couple tips before, as we wrap up um, on some of the ways that you can give to our audience out there to sell more eBooks, um, people that are in the self-publishing space? Yeah, well, I'm going to first and first and foremost say that the most important thing is your book cover. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care how many great tactics you use. If that book cover doesn't look excellent, um, you're going to have super low conversion rates on everything you do. And it's not the marketing tactics you used, okay? Uh, another thing to think about too is I like to pretend when I'm designing a book cover, shrink it down to the size you'll see it on Amazon search results. Because usually when we're looking at our book covers, we'll see this giant cover and be like, oh, it looks amazing. But then when you shrink it down, you'll realize you can't recognize a lot of the stuff in the background and then it just doesn't make sense. Or you may find too that the... Um, that the words you were putting in there that was supposed to help are too small for anybody to read. And now it just looks like it's taken up space. So again, really shrink that down to the size you'd see. Another thing I like to think about too, is that when we are designing books, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the shopper. Now the shopper goes to Amazon, type something into Amazon, and then Amazon presents them with a list of books. Well, the first thing those shoppers eyes do, and we did a heat map study on this, um, actually set up cameras and had people come in and it would watch their eyes when they were on an Amazon page. And the key was, was that we saw that after they type in their search result, they scroll down looking at the book covers. And when they see something that looks interesting, their eyes shoot over to the title, subtitle, and then finally on the review, and then they click if they decide to. Here's what we got from this, okay? We believe that uh, when shoppers are on there, if there's any ambiguity or they're confused, no matter how great your title or subtitle or book cover is, they won't click on it. So what we need to do is make sure that it is evident from the cover, title, and subtitle that if you're a nonfiction, the person can just look at those three things and immediately know what it is, who it's for, and how it will help them. And if they can't figure that those three things out, they will be much more likely to not click on your book and give it a go on your book and give it a go. However, though, if they can quickly see that it does those three things, they will be more than happy to click to read your book description and decide to buy. So think about how you present information in your cover, title, and subtitle that will get them to do it. Another thing for fiction, on the other hand, is that people need to be able to answer what type of sub-sub fiction is this, and I'll explain that in a second, but also like who is this for and you know what kind of entertainment value will I get from this? 
So sub sub fiction, another way of calling it is sub sub genres. Imagine you're a fantasy fan. Cool. But do you just say any fantasy? Are you into urban fantasy? Are you into, you know, a uh, horror fantasy or dragon fantasy or any of that? Right. You can start to sub down. So I need to know. I'm a big lit RPG fan, which is a fan, which is a fantasy, but I'm an even bigger game lit fan, which is a sub sub genre. OK, so can I figure out from the cover title and subtitle that this is a game lit book? And by the way, game lit is where the person's stuck in a video game. That's a fantasy game. So they have to level up kind of like think, um, uh, what is it, Diablo or um, World of Warcraft, but in a book form. Mm -hmm. Well, I need something on the cover that tells me that or you better put in the subtitle, make sure I understand that what it is. So as you can see, confusion leads people to less sales. So when you guys are designing your books, uh, just think about those things as you're putting together your, your cover, choosing your title, and choosing your subtitle. Awesome, awesome. So really niching down, so sub-niche down, um, and also um, that first impression, right? That first impression with uh, the book cover. So much like YouTube, right? It's all about the thumbnails, making sure that that first impression showing up is, um, is really getting that message across and drawing the, the viewers uh, in. Uh, so that's awesome. Cool. That's great. Okay. If I can't tell what that YouTube video is about or how it's going to serve my purpose, whether it's entertainment or to learn about something, mm -hmm. I'm not going to mm -hmm. click on it. I'll click on the next one. The one that actually answers those three things. You bet. Exactly. 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 Awesome. Um, I'm going to get into some q and I'm going to look through some of the comments here and ask some questions. But while I do that, uh, Dave, maybe you can just share uh, what's the best ways to connect with you, uh, find you online, um, all the things that you're working on. Yeah, well, if you go to kindleprinter.com, I've got a contact me page, so you can always contact me there, especially if there are any questions that we didn't answer on the show. Be more than happy to answer to those. Um, otherwise, though, I'm not much of a social media guy. I do have uh, Twitter, but I've always just, um, you know, it's never been really the thing I focus on. And I think that really is a good lesson in its own where you don't have to be everywhere and you don't have to be on top of all the different things out there. Just focus on what you do best and you'll get more out of that. Fantastic. Awesome. Cool. Um, okay, so let me just get into some questions here. Um, there's more of a comment here from Lore Enzo. Um, he says, I have a very similar story. We were building a digital marketing academy that explored different e-commerce solutions. It's a tough decision as we live in Italy and have specific requirements, but I think if it was a winner, so that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Lorenzo. Um, also, we got uh, more of a question here from YouTube Live. Video or PDF, which are better for courses? Um, uh, I've got a thought on that, but Dave, if you want to share what your thoughts are on that yeah, question. Yeah, well, I think, uh, how comfortable are you on video? Uh, that's a real question that comes across. As you can see, uh, if you watch my videos or you're watching this, I mean, I hope you think I'm comfortable <laughs> on video, right? <laughs> but uh, the other thing that I found, though, is people are, more, are much more likely to convert when they see you mm -hmm. and they talk with you, uh, especially mm -hmm. for our software company, let's face it. Uh, a soulless corporation is not something people get behind, but a person, mm -hmm. an idea, those are things that people can get behind. And nothing mm -hmm. per personifies that better than actually watching the founder on video talk about how to use the software and be very personable. So if you're trying to drive later sales, whether it's service, whether it's a product, whether it's a software, a SaaS, mm -hmm. you name it, I believe that having humans speak to humans has a much better connection rate and you'll see better sales. So video will win. However, though, if you're like super uncomfortable and you're, you know, um, and I'm not saying that your equipment or lighting has to be perfect. I mean, look at, look at mine. I, you, you see my crumpled up, you know, uh, <laughs> couch in the back there and my, my wonky light, like it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, mm -hmm. I would say the most important thing is, is the sound quality, but if you can deliver on that and be personable on camera, it'll go much further than just putting a PDF or typing out your course. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's great. And um, again, if you guys have any questions, we're going to spend another couple minutes here before we wrap up. Um, I've got a question about pricing, right? Yeah. I'm going to go back to your strategy with the free course and really trying to you know, get it from you because we talk about this all the time at Thinkific that, you know, first, you know, put out a free course out there, um, you know, and, and just get it out to as many people as possible, right? Usually that is a very common launch strategy, free course that then maybe it's like five, 10 lessons really quick, but really delivers value. Um, and then at the end, you then upsell to your full masterclass or your full academy course, you know, that flagship course. So, um, or in your case, a paid software. So um, again, 
just share with us um, and the people that are listening out there, you know, that mentality of not cashing in right at the front of that offer um, and, and really how you came to that decision. Yeah, well, I think that a free course builds more trust with the person. Um, they understand so long as you're delivering. I mean, let's face it, if your if your course is terrible, well, you're you're branding yourself as not a very good course to invest in. But if you really come uh, to the table and you bring great information and you help to improve their lives, they're going to be way more likely to purchase something from you in the future, knowing that, hey, if that's a quality I got for free, what am I going to get for paid? And if you approach it that way, I think you're going to have major success. Now, another thing, though, that kind of comes with this um, is a different tactic, especially for books, is, uh, you know, Pat Flynn, he came out with the book, Will It Fly? And one of the things he did as a content upgrade for his book readers was that you could sign up for his free course, which basically was like a companion course to his book. And just from that, he was able to see a conversion rate of one out of every three buyers sign up for his free course. Now, that's some incredible conversion rates for your book on Amazon. And at that point, what he did uh, was that he had an advanced course, so the next step up that he sold. And it was something he put out publicly um, at, I think it was traffic and conversions, but he said that it was over $120,000 in sales on the first weekend alone, just to the people that had signed up from his book. So you can see that you can also have it still be a lead in or as a companion course or as a content upgrade. And then later, and I mean, he did this way later, was come out with the advanced course as well. If I were to go back in time for when I first started uh, Kindlepreneur, I think I would have jumped on doing a free course as my big time you know, content upgrade because I've just seen it be so much easier for people to really get behind it. Uh, funny thing is, and I guess we could step back too to that question on PDF or video. When I go to conferences and I speak, I found that after I, like before I did that free course, nobody really recognized me. They just kind of knew of Kindlepreneur. I mean, if you, you know, there's not many pictures of me on my website. However, though, as people, everybody's taken the course, they were seeing my YouTube videos. Uh, just this past month, I went to 20 books in Vegas and I really didn't get much time. You know, there would be people stopping me. They recognized me from my videos. They recognized you know, me from the course. They were telling me about the course. So again, uh, it really provides a lot by just having people see and hear you um, and provide content. So just something to really consider if you're moving towards that. Yeah, no, absolutely. It actually reminds me, there's a, there's a, one of our team members here, Aaron Morin, who doesn't ever really show up too much nowadays, um, you know, probably for the last year and a half, two years on social media, but he is our lead product educator. So he creates all of our training courses for our course creators, for all of our users. Um, and he's not on social, but everybody knows him because he's all in all of our training courses, right? So um, no, it's definitely a way to build your personal brand as well. Um, and um, no, it's great. Um, these are actually really impressive names to have on your testimonials page, Dave. Thanks. You've got Jeff Goins, you've got Pat Flynn, and also JLD. Uh, so yeah, no, you've, you've definitely working with some awesome people here. Thank you. Um, I've actually got to update that. I've um, <laughs> Since doing this, I've actually been able to work with Orson Scott Card, uh, wow. as well as a whole bunch of other fiction authors um, in the industry. And uh, just recently had Amazon even promote my own content as well, uh, telling people to go there to learn how to optimize your books for more sales. So. Like I said, I got to update that testimonial page, but <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that a, a video has been a really big part of that. Just kind of having people, you know, see the content. Um, interesting enough, one of the things I now do is I have a lot of like publishing companies who will contact me about either consulting mm -hmm. or working with their team. That's how I like got to work with horses, Scott card, as well as a couple others coming up. But, um, the first thing I do is I actually send them that course and be like, all right, so I don't have to waste my time explaining in the beginning. I just want to make sure you take my course and that we're all on the same page so that when I show up, we can go from there and do some more things. Um, so it's been really unique in that respect. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I, we've we've heard a lot of consultants and coaches and different people that do that. You know, they just send their course first and then that that course brings that prospect sort of up to speed and mm -hmm. it saves them, you know, an hour or two hours, maybe more of time to have that conversation again. So a lot of even, you know, agencies and digital marketing agencies do this where they create sort of like, let's say a Facebook ads course, sort of the basics of it, sends that to the prospect. And then before they book a call with them, they have to go through that course. So exactly. that they're saving that hour, that two hour of consulting time. So 
Awesome. Well, this has been really good, uh, Dave. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. We've gone over time as we always usually do. We always ask people for 20 minutes and we go, you know, usually 45 to an hour. Uh, but yeah, really appreciate your time here. If anybody wants to learn more, um, again, maybe just repeat how they can connect with you, Dave. And then um, and if you have any questions, if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to leave your questions in the comments. We're going to always be watching those. Um, and we'll make sure we tag Dave to get the answer. So Dave, as we sign off, um, two things. Where can people reach you? But before that, uh, what's uh, sort of some parting words for course creators out there um, that you can share? Well, with regards to course creators, I think that um, making sure that you have structure um, really helps. So I almost treat creating a course like I do writing a book where I break up the different chapters, I fill in what exactly we need to cover. And I think just that process alone really helped me to tackle course creation. Because sometimes courses can feel like, you know, like climbing Mount Everest, you know, it's going to be forever. Or running a marathon, you know, it's just going to take a long time. But uh, there's an old saying of how do you eat an elephant? Well, one bite at a time. And uh, so just break, break up your course, make sure you're covering everything, lay it out, and then, you know, tackle it one bite at a time. As for where to find me, uh, like I said before, you can find me at kindleprinter.com. I've got a contact me page and you can ask questions there. Awesome, very good. Very good, awesome, Dave. Thank you so much for your time. Everybody, thanks for joining us and hanging out with us live. And if you have any questions, you're watching this on the replay, then just leave a comment. We'll make sure that we get your questions answered. Dave, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, no problem. And again, thanks for having me.